Sonic Forces has ruined the Sonic community. I've been wanting to get something off my chest for a long time now, but I haven't exactly been able to find the correct words for the issue that I'm seeing be repeated every single day in the Sonic community. However, I, I think I understand now, especially with the recent announcement of Sonic X Shadow Generations. It seems like, yet again, the community is divided on how to feel about this remaster. Without repeating too much of what I said in that video, I basically just thought it looked like cyberspace with poor controls and mediocre level design. And newsflash, I did not like cyberspace, so seeing something similar to that is not going to make me excited. But you know, after that video, I got a ton of comments of people agreeing with me and some people disagreeing with me. And of course, that did include some of the comments that are in every single Sonic news video. Stuff like, it's not out yet, and that Sonic tubers don't like anything. You know, the basic stuff I've seen a million times, I'm not even phased by it anymore. Thankfully, I didn't see much toxicity at all. Even though most of my audience may have disagreed with my last video, 90% of you guys were still respectful about it. You guys are the best, and I love you for it. But I did get a comment by someone who disagreed with me, and low-key, I, I think they were kind of spitting facts. They said, hey Matt, I saw JNXV's reaction and it looked like Sonic Forces to him. This is maybe a hot take, but I think Forces gave us permanent PTSD of bad level design, which is very true, and I will get to that in a moment. He even goes on to say, I watched Unleashed and Generation's real gameplay trailer, and it looks kind of mid, but if you were to play it, it's pretty good. I don't want to sound like a fanboy, but judging a short part of a stage makes it look like it's out of context. I want to address this exact comment because I feel like it perfectly put into words everything wrong with modern day Sonic discussions. So shout out to the commenter because you gave me a video idea just from seeing your comment, so... You know, that, that's pretty cool. If you're new here, make sure to leave a like and subscribe with the bell like the Giga Chad you are. Anyways, let's get right into it. Let's start off with the first part of this comment. Sonic Forces made Sonic fans too paranoid of bad level design. Because realistically speaking, I feel like a lot of the annoying debates that happen today around Sonic games are because of Sonic Forces. Now, I want to clarify that I may come off as a bit aggressive here, but I promise I am looking at this from an unbiased perspective. Everyone asked how I could judge Sonic X Shadow Generations based off of five seconds of gameplay. But the better question is, why? Why are Sonic fans judging this trailer despite not much being shown in the first place? It's because the little bit that we have seen seems very similar to Cyberspace and Sonic Forces. There's entire animations ripped from Sonic Frontier Cyberspace, and the level design we have seen so far are straight lines or require minimal input. That is a fact from what we have seen so far. Now, the other side of the argument is that we've only seen five seconds, right? Meaning that there's there's still a lot more that we haven't seen of the game. Maybe in the trailer, they just chose to show off those straight line segments for whatever various reason. Who knows, maybe the very next trailer will show level design on par with Sonic Generations or Sonic Unleashed. It's hard to show good level design with five seconds of footage, right? Here's the thing. Y you are 100% correct. We haven't seen much of the shadow portion of the game at all. And just because of the three or four clips of the trailer that we have seen of the level design doesn't mean that it's going to be bad on release. The level design could still be good and we would all be eating our words right now. But we have been proven wrong so many times that... I'm just getting tired of it. Believe it or not, this exact argument and debate has happened with multiple Sonic games since Sonic Forces. It's to the point where I've lost so much faith in Sonic Team and Sega to make a competent boost level that if 5 seconds already looks bad, then in my mind it's probably going to be bad. And I'm going to give multiple examples of when this has happened in the community. First, let's start with the big one, Sonic Forces. I don't know if I've ever told this story, but I was never around for the release of Sonic Forces. But I remember when I came back to the Sonic community, I was interested in the game. I remember seeing some call me Johnny's review of the game, and I think he called it a Sonic game on autopilot. Some other fans called it a bad game, some called it mediocre, but to me, 
I loved boosting Sonic games. I loved Sonic Unleashed and Sonic Generations. Those were my games. I even loved Sonic Colors. So from the footage I saw in everyone's videos of Sonic Forces, it looked like a really fun game. Then I bought it, and I hated every second of it. That was so miserable. <laughs> now I know what I like in boosting games and what I don't like in boosting games. In all of the footage I saw of Sonic Forces, I saw Sonic running on straight lines and I, I didn't think much of it. I saw Sonic running, so I thought it looked fun. Of course, now when I see the footage after playing the game, I see how boring and poorly made the level design really is. And nowadays, it's almost like a dog whistle. Whenever I see anything resembling its level design, I'm already paranoid and disappointed. Because you guys have to remember, with all of the footage I saw of Sonic Forces, it looked great. I thought it looked fine, but you know, when you play it, you, you see the issues. And you guys also have to remember that with the trailers for Sonic Forces, it only showed short snippets of the levels. You didn't get to see a whole lot of it. So once again, the same argument could be made for Sonic Forces. You only saw five seconds, why are you complaining? And then here we go again, Sonic Frontiers. If you guys ever watch my channel during the release cycle for Sonic Frontiers, then you know the amount of mind games I had to go through with that game. When Sonic Frontiers Cyberspace got shown off, I remember saying that I didn't like the reused level aesthetics. And I remember saying that it didn't look like it controlled well and that a lot of the level design looked like it lacked input needed, despite these levels being recreations of better levels. When it was finally released, it all turned out to be true, unfortunately. Granted, it's not nearly as bad as Sonic Forces, and Cyberspace does have its fair share of banger stages, especially in Update 3, but a lot of the reused stages did lose most of its quality when being ported over. Many of those stages were built as levels that require fast reaction speeds to upcoming obstacles because of how fast Sonic was. But if you port over the level and make Sonic significantly slower with different controls, it then becomes very easy to react to any obstacle in your way, and it pretty much kills any and all adrenaline that you gather throughout the level. All of my worries with cyberspace that I saw in the trailers became true with the release of Sonic Frontiers. And it's not just cyberspace, that goes for the entirety of Sonic Frontiers 2, like there was a lot of issues I saw in the trailers that ended up being in the final game. Thankfully somehow Frontiers managed to be good despite the bad features. Even with its issues of level design in the open zone in cyberspace, it still managed managed to be a great Sonic game. But the problem is that the issues that a lot of us saw in the trailer never got fixed and it ended up releasing with them. Those trailers were representative of the final product. And then we go full circle, because I, I remember vividly when Cyberspace got shown off and I called the level design mid, I remember the exact same comments getting posted. It was just five seconds of gameplay. You can't judge it. I had deja vu when I saw everyone responding to the criticism of Sonic X Shadow Generations because it was verbatim the same points that were made with every Sonic Frontiers trailer. And not to be that guy, but we, we saw how that turned out. The point I'm making with all of this is that Sonic Forces did ruin the community. Because whenever a Sonic game releases, there is always a side of people who are skeptical and complaining about the issues that they see in the trailer, and the other side who says we need to see more or play the game to be able to judge it fairly. And, of course, both sides of the discussion tend to be hostile and annoying to each other all the time. But here's the thing. Neither side is technically wrong. Forgive me if it seems like I'm fin sitting here, but I, I'm seriously not. The old saying goes, where there's smoke, there's fire. And for there to be two substantial groups on either side of the community probably means that some of the smoke is warranted. You cannot blame someone for being upset about five seconds of gameplay looking bad because of the amount of times that trailers have proven to be representative of the final product especially in the case of Sonic the Hedgehog. If you saw a Mario Odyssey screenshot of Mario just standing at Cap Kingdom, you'd be like, oh, it looks like there's a few hills, but you, you know, it, it looks fun. It's gonna be a Mario game. It's gonna be good. But with Sonic, you look at that screenshot and you say, oh no, they made the entire level design nothing but hills. It sucks 
that we look at Sonic games that way, but you simply cannot trust Sonic games to not be hiding something in their trailers. If you notice that level design is too automated or too blocky, sorry, but there's a good chance that it probably is. None of us watch trailers like this until Sonic Forces and Sonic Frontiers. I've even noticed us Sonic fans doing it with smaller releases like Sonic Colors Ultimate. It is an endless cycle of Sonic discourse. Criticizing trailers, even if it seems like not enough was shown off, is not a bad thing. Because at the end of the day, if you're right and 5 seconds aren't a good representation of the game, then the criticism will become obsolete after more footage shows up or the game releases. The criticism is not going to affect the game negatively. And trust me, criticism is very important because it encourages the developers to make the games better. But l let's talk about the other side of discussion. On the flip side, maybe everyone on the positive side is correct. Maybe we are looking too much into it. Here's a clip of Sonic running in Sonic Generations. Notice how it's a straight path with not much going on? In the actual game, it's just a short segment and almost acts as a finisher to a level. The rest of Sonic Generations is actually great with amazing level design, but if we saw this gameplay in a trailer in the modern day, there would be outrage once again. We would have been complaining, fighting, dogpiling, and attacking each other for an entire summer over a game that was going to be good regardless of its trailer. Do you see? how much Sega has destroyed their trust with Sonic Forces. Sonic Forces was the Sonic game that looked amazing, but upon playing, we noticed that everything that looked good in the trailer was set up through bad mechanics and automation. Sonic Forces taught Sonic fans to not trust good quality. You can argue that this has been an issue with Sonic for a lot longer than Sonic Forces, but I would like to believe that Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations restored a lot of trust. I don't think many people were looking at Sonic Generations news and saying, whoa, this thing looks bad, did you not see that straight line? I can't believe Sega are repeating their mistakes once again. Or I don't know, maybe people at the time were saying that. I was just a child, so I, I wouldn't actually know. I grew up as a meta-era kid. I love Sonic Generations, I love Sonic Colors, I even liked Sonic Lost World. And I was completely unaware of any online discourse at the time. All I knew about was that some people were upset about Sonic having green eyes, but that was about it. But eventually, Sonic Boom came along, and then Sonic Forces came, and then Sonic Frontiers to a lesser extent came. It may sound crazy, but before before Sonic Boom, I had trust in Sega and Sonic Team. I trusted them because I was a new fan of the franchise. So much that when I did come back and played Sonic Forces, I assumed that the hate was an overreaction by the community. But obviously, that trust was broken once I actually played it. It almost feels like every era of Sonic has that one game that broke the community's trust. And when I say that, I'm not talking about a Sonic game that you thought was mediocre or didn't have much faith in to begin with. I doubt many people were insanely shocked when they found out that Sonic Lost World wasn't as good as they wanted it to be. Those are not the games I'm talking about. I'm referring to Sonic games that people seriously trusted and actually fell in love with. Games like Sonic 06 and Sonic Forces, these games that people believed were going to be great. Because during the release cycle for these games, the trailers made it look excellently made. The trailers did that. When Sega catfishes you on something you really wanted, it's hard to not notice issues in these trailers when we've been taught to look for anything bad in a good looking product. Maybe this is a bit of a gross assumption, but I feel like a lot of the people who are trusting Sega so easily on these trailers and are so quick to villainize anyone who doesn't trust them haven't been burned yet. And I don't mean some small disappointing release like Sonic Colors Ultimate, I mean on honestly burned. And look, I can't blame anyone for it. If the first game you played or came back to was Sonic Frontiers, I probably wouldn't be worried about this Sonic DLC either. I would be on the front lines fighting everyone who says it looks like Sonic Forces or Cyberspace. I'm not telling you to not be positive, and I'm not telling you that you're wrong for being positive. Because there's a good chance that I'm a fool and know nothing about this Shadow game and it's somehow about to be a top 3 boost game. But I believe that I and anyone else who is skeptical deserve 
deserve mutual respect on the subject. Because I can guarantee you that when gameplay gets shown off more and it happens to look more like cyberspace, the new defense will be that you haven't played it yet, so you can't judge it. I've seen it happen multiple times before, I, I know it's coming again. If you want Sonic discussions to not be a constant cesspool of insults and hostility, you have to understand that while it's entirely possible that a Sonic game could be great, it's also very possible that it might not be good at all. Maybe it could be mediocre, or even terrible for that matter. Disregarding criticism under the idea that it's just a trailer could be valid, but a lot of times these issues do carry over into the final game, and that's happened multiple times. Again, I'm not saying those issues are going to be significant issues when we get the game, but if you're fooled once or twice or three or four, five, six, seven thousand times, then you kind of have to proceed with a bit of caution. To be honest, I know that this video is not going to age very well. Regardless of what I say in this video is not going to change what Sonic fans choose to do during this release cycle. I'm sure that there will be plenty of dogpiling attacks and all kinds of stuff over on the cesspool that is Sonic Twitter. It is what it is, this is the community we're in. It's not all bad, there's a ton of great people here, but there is a lot of hostile arguing. But if you ever are angry and you want to assault another Sonic fan for dropping a bad take or whatever, try to remember that we're all in here for the same reason. None of us would be debating if Sega didn't destroy our trust. That's all I'm gonna say, alright? If Sonic Forces was a good game, you know, maybe we wouldn't be here. If Sega did have our trust, it would be like the Super Mario Odyssey analogy that I gave earlier. We would see a simple gameplay clip and automatically assume that the game was going to be good. But who knows, maybe someone will change after hearing what I have to say in this video. I, I don't know how influential I am. Because regardless of where you stand, we're all Sonic fans at the end of the day who want a good game. If you're skeptical about Sonic X Shadow, then be skeptical, you have every right to. If you're excited for the game, then I'm happy that you're excited. That's a good thing. And I hope the game is fantastic, and even if it isn't, I hope at least you enjoy it. I mainly wanted to make this video because I looked at Sonic Twitter and saw the exact same discourse that I see with every Sonic release, so I, I, I wanted to say something about it. And also I got this comment and it put in towards what I was thinking. I know that with my videos a lot of you guys will be disagreeing with me, but I'm perfectly fine with it because you guys do it in a respectful manner. I could not ask for a better audience. So let me know your thoughts, let me know the philosophy of the Sonic community and what you think is wrong with every release release cycle of a Sonic game. Because regardless if you agree with this video or not, I think we can all agree that during a Sonic release, it is not a pleasant time to be in the community. Anyways, that's all I have to say for today, so if you like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe with the bell. And with that said, I love you guys, I'll see you very soon. Peace out. My chill members are Snack Pigeon, Sonopedia, ArtraxYZ, AHS, Sonic Man 715, Francis T218, Neil, David J. Chavas, Super Shacks, Boom, Pie Studios, Snix, Bananas, Chip Chap Chop, The Squeaker Nerd, and Super Saiyan Sonic. Thank you all for supporting my channel. Make sure to click one of the in card screen videos right here. Love you guys. Peace out.